This is the U.S. intelligence agency, Mind Control. Bernie Sanders went on Theo Vaughn's podcast. This guy's from the Rogan universe, but maybe not. Jesus Christ. No, he fucking isn't. No, he isn't. <laughs> well, no, because if you've been on Rogan, you're part of the Rogan verse. That's how it works now. Like, yes, he got a bump from Rogan, but no, he's not a part of Rogan's crew. He's basically does everything by himself. Like, that's such a it's such a shit characterization and such a fucking but he's been dirty. On, that's no, so he's been that's on doing, Joe Rogan. He's been on Joe Rogan. Uh, he's part of the Rogan verse. That's doing Theo. Bobby so Lee, fucking dirty. part of the Rogan verse. Been on Joe Rogan. Bobby Lee totally only ha- has a career because of Joe Rogan. <laughs> that fucking it does. That's him so dirty. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Rogan verse. Rogan only verse. famous because of Rogan. Bro, you know, you know, he just had on. Um, I've seen a few things, but no, I haven't. Peter Thiel, um, the guy who literally is oh, JD no. Vance's donor and wrote Project Twenty Twenty Five. No, right? And he asked, "I actually put an RM Brown thing in." He literally, uh, where yeah. it's, it's about this interview with Peter Thiel, but um, he literally says he asked him about Epstein, and Joe Rogan was like, "Yeah, but how could you have known at the time?" And he's like, "Oh no, this is after he got the conviction." Joe, you're not going to push on that after he said that shit? Come on, Joe. What are we doing here? Boy. Exactly. The worst boy. of them, definitely. A- huh? That's the issue. You're right. Boy. That is the issue. Mm. Oh, well, they were girls, weren't they? He didn't diddle boys. <laughs> what about bacon? Comedian and Rogan is sort of squatting on the comedian uh, yeah. podcast circuit at this point. Yeah, he's made a lot of like a, a, a specials happen for people. He's a bit of a kingmaker, so I can understand why comedians feel like they need to kind of yeah. be in good graces with him. The expanded um, Rogan verse, even some Marvel properties are good. This is well, how about that? Like the expanded Rogan really verse. Affect- yeah, how about you just shut the fuck up? And realize that comedians will go onto Joe Rogan's podcast for a boost. You know, he's a he's a signpost. He's a, a pedestal that if you can get onto is very good for your career as a comedian. You know, like anybody else's Somebody career. Tell the comedian. Holy shit. You know, there's only 250 comedians left in the world. <laughs> They're in danger. Somebody get the that comedian. That change, right? Um, Am I do you right, think Jack? That that's still possible. What? They <laughs> said somebody killed the comedian. Possible <laughs> today with uh, like a lot of the lobbies and stuff that they have that goes on. Well, I think you know one of the points I think everybody knows is you have a government dominated by big money interests, right? That's no great secret. Uh, so you have these billionaires now in their super PACs. If you're a billionaire, you can contribute hundreds of millions of dollars to elect people to feed people. If you're a large corporation or you represent the pharmaceutical industry, do you know how many, pho- uh, how many lobbyists there are in Washington, D.C. representing the big drug companies? Take a wild and crazy guess. Um, 2,000. You got it. That's a pretty good guess. About 1,800. Wow. So there are 100 members of the Senate and 435 members of the House. Got it? 535. And you got 1,800 lobbyists. Well paid former leaders of the Democratic Party, leaders of the Republican Party, they're there to say, hey, Congress, do everything you can to make sure we make as much money as possible, and who gives a damn whether people can afford the prescription drugs they need. So that's power. So you have a whole other drug government almost going yeah, on. Absolutely. That's even bigger than our own government. Uh, I, numbers-wise. Well, not big, that's, well, we can define what we mean by bigger. But That's fair. But if you look at Wall Street, the power of Wall Street, the drug companies, the insurance companies, the fossil fuel industry, you have enormous wealth, enormous power. And if your question is, is a government that tells them what to do or they tell what the government to do, more the latter. They tell the government what to do. Very powerful. Does it feel like that's changed over your time, like in, in politics, or has it always been that way? I think it, to some degree, you know, money talks, right? Yeah. No great secret. That's always been the case. It's worse now, and I'll tell you why. Uh, As a result of this Citizens United Supreme Court decision, you familiar with that? Mm -hmm. So people bought action, billionaires really bought action. They said, hey, 
it's undemocratic. You're taking away my freedom of speech, right? I got a First Amendment right. We're on TV now. For, you could say whatever you want to say. And I'm a billionaire. And I want to spend unlimited sums of money to defeat this candidate or support this candidate. And you have laws on the books that which restrict my freedom to buy the election. You understand know what I'm saying? 100%. Okay. And Supreme Court said, well, guys, you're right. You're billionaires. You should be able to spend as much money as you want to buy elections. Also, I I really have an issue with uh, this this title. Like Paul Kami talking talking it's about clickbait. how huh it's clickbait, and that's what you have. So, so right now, clickbait. this is literally the truth. No, I know, but it's still generally around what we're talking about. I I'm, I'm interested to see what they start saying when the video stops, and whether how clickbait it is. You have super packs where billionaires can put unlimited amounts of money, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to defeat people they don't like or to support people they do like. Uh, that's power. Isn't that cheating the public? And that I'm is pretty a sure I deleted that sound. Is supposed to oh, really? It's very long. I'm going to have to get re-familiar. have the ability to create common sense in their brain. That part of the brain is missing. That is very long. But look, you and I can disagree on an issue, all right? Ten people. We argue it out. We vote. I get the majority. You get the majority. So I, I still think that this is the best soundbite Sex is only for children. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> somebody wins, somebody loses. I don't think billionaires should be able to buy elections. And I think most people think that. Most people are like, why are corporations or companies allowed to like give money to candidates and influence elections, right? And almost every person I know says that that should be right. no. Whose responsibility is it to make sure it doesn't happen? Is it ours or is it our, is it the politicians? Well, what happened is there were laws what about put this in one, place. Uh-oh, retard alert. Put <laughs> <laughs> that one. I forgot we put that one in. Oh, I still have it. Isn't that cheating the public? Isn't that betraying the public's trust? Isn't that cheating the public? Isn't that immoral? What is this? Because he's gay. <laughs> Stick that one up with the I'm better than you, because that'd be one that I try and time with shit. <laughs> did limit the power of big money. Yeah. Okay. And what that Supreme Court decision said is what Congress did was unconstitutional. Denied big money, their freedom of speech. If you're a billionaire, you have freedom of speech. That means you can run ads all over the day and, and to you know beat Bernie Sanders, beat anybody. Uh, and that's what happened. So what we have got to do now is once again, pass legislation that will, will do that. Are there politicians? I mean, it's an interesting discussion because like, how is paying somebody to put something somewhere free speech. You are forcing people to view something. Well, no? uh, yeah, well, the Supreme Court sucks. I don't give a fuck about the Supreme Court. That's the point, is that it's not constitutional. Mm, okay, so it, it, and that's that's what they're saying, is that this is a thing that is allowed through the, the Supreme yeah, Court. Yeah, they're saying that the okay. Supreme Court said, you're right, we are limiting your free speech by not letting you put ads up. Oh, oh, that's dumb. Yeah. You, I okay. mean, this whole interview then, with Theo Vaughn is worth listening to. It's really good. Yes. Well, I, I did listen to it, but I didn't, I didn't know that that is what they were talking about there. I thought they were just talking on hypotheticals. No, he's talking about been... super packs. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, I mean, I'm generally, I'm generally, I mean, I say it all the time, take money out of politics. I, I agree with this, but like ads... A money out of politics is well. Actually, Bernie ads. talks about actually doing a thing where the standardized funds would be there. He literally says stuff that. No, I've I know. I remember him talking about that. And then you access public funds, and he yeah. was talking about how that would all work. And that's a much better idea. Um, it also, you know, th there's ways that you can expand that to fix issues that I think well, are, see, are big as, as well. But yeah. before before Schumer, Kingji was actually Feinstein. 
I know you're thinking that. Well, wouldn't that be a queen? No, it's gender neutral. <laughs> Petitions that aren't. That, that's an in, interesting way how they opened it up, right? And and if he, I, again, I don't know a ton about uh, him except for the fact that that he comes from the Rogan universe. So fact, I, it's hard for bitch. me to say what his his politics are. But if Fuck. there's there, there's got to be some crossover with fans. And, and why you do Theo dirty like this? Come on. It's when <laughs> Sam's not there that you can expect the most off the rail cringe. Uh. That's the, the an argument that, you know, with anti-vaxxer people, I actually try to deploy a little bit, which is like they're concerned about the greed of big pharma. I feel bad for calling her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're kind of a misogynist, bro. <laughs> They're concerned about the pharmaceutical companies so gouging dirty. them <laughs> and th not feeling secure about, you know, what's going into their bodies. And Bernie does a really good job. Like, I cannot emphasize how much I would prefer people watch Theo Vaughn's podcast over Joe Rogan. Yeah. Well, Theo Vaughn's podcast is great. I don't know. Like, Theo Vaughn also had uh, Tucker Carlson on. That's controversial. But that was a great fucking interview. But I know, Theo right? also has... You know how Joe Rogan claims he has a bullshit detector? I think Theo Vaughn actually does. I think he has the the logical connections to be able to go, that's kind of dumb. Explain further, please. You know what I mean? He's, he's, well, a lot of times, it's funny if you go on YouTube, there's like compilations of Theo Vaughn's jokes going over Rogan's head. Yes, yeah. Um, and you would also see in uh, Rogan's in, uh, episode with Harlan Williams. Harlan Williams is fucking hysterical. And Joe Rogan is just like, what are you doing the whole time? He's eating celery into the microphone yeah, yeah, as yeah, Joe Rogan kept, is speaking. He kept and pulling out celery. And then at one point he like has like a fucking, like, he has <laughs> fake other props. Like he has like... <laughs> scratches or something on him i don't remember all the props he pulls out it's so fucking funny and joe rogan's just sitting there like what are you doing he's like comedy <laughs> it's he very funny got a tattoo or something yeah I... and then he's so like a bear attack wound and it's like this and this, the scars are falling off of him that he stuck out. Yeah, he was talking about a bear trap, I think. <laughs> it's just very funny. But the, you you always... And you can kind of tell with his stand-up that Rogan, I think, has kind of lost the comedy thing. He's more of a facilitator for comedy as opposed to a comedian these days, I think. But Jack, uh, the man defends stool humping and is a known stool humper okay that is true but that is like that is like lower than clown status for comedy see i i wouldn't even know because i've just never heard of that term until like three weeks ago um i have noticed that he does like to climb his stool which is strange i did think that was strange on his last special <laughs> Like, why are, you, why are you climbing the chair? That's strange. Stop doing this. Do comedy. <laughs> there of widening that conversation into other sectors and other lobbying efforts, because that's the problem. It's not just one malevolent industry. It's regulatory capture as it relates to... Also, I'm pretty sure Theo Vaughn is, like, hard working class. <laughs> that's the other thing as well. So it's like, He's just a dude who's kind of funny, grew up in Louisiana, and just is interested in talking to people. I completely understand where he's coming from. I, maybe that's why I'm so heated. Because <laughs> I'm like, leave the fucking guy alone. <laughs> All industries. Yeah, I think Bernie is really good at the common sense frame here um, and, and appealing to that. Um, uh, and you want to set up this uh, next uh, well this? because this is amazing I'd seen this before I'd seen the beginning by the end of this it seems like the message had gotten through to Theo Vaughn and this is a a, a really good explanation I oh think of God. the alienation people I'm 
I'm not sure they actually watched the episode. Maybe they just watched the clip because Theo actively engages in the conversation. He's not stupid on the topic. He understands. He he gets what's being spoken about. So it's like to act like he's only oh he's he's got it. He's become a communist now. No. He's probably always thought this way. He's probably politically homeless, if you were to ask him directly. Feel under late stage capitalism. Or he's a piece of shit. Who fucking knows? <laughs> we should be having a tremendous discussion why we're the only country on earth that to guarantee health care. It doesn't take place on television. We should be talking about massive income and wealth inequality. There are three people in America who own more wealth than the bottom half of American society. Think that's appropriate? No, sir. Okay. I think there should be a limit on how much a person can earn. Okay. To be honest with you, maybe you know, Whoa. Some, you know, some millions. <laughs> like this I is this is the shit that Theo always throws out. Like this is why I love listening to him because he'll just like take an idea and just throw something out there to be discussed. He doesn't care. I don't think right. it should be billions. Someone should. I agree have with it. you. I agree with you actually, and I think most Americans would. Like, when's the last time you've seen that discussion on NBC? It ain't going to take place. All right. We have, but that's what the people want, though. Yes, that is exactly. That's why you're a success, and why other people, you know, with very limited resources, if you like, because you don't see that type of discussion. I just did a poll. My campaign did a poll just on these issues. Uh, you know, talking about issues that working class people want and need that are almost never discussed in politics or in the corporate media, and the answer is people are hurting. They want change. No one's talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. It's like, I don't know, the people don't even get thought of anymore, it feels like a lot of times. And here's the toughest part, I think, Bernie, is as a person who, you know, has felt like in their life, maybe their father died in a war, their grandfather died in a war, and they've been uh, tried to pay their taxes and be a, you know, considerate person in their town or their country. Um, after a while, those good people start, it starts to erode a little because they don't feel like, and they lose their sense of purpose, man. When you're, you lose the fabric of your society, a lot of people, that's how they, they didn't even realize it. A lot of us don't even realize that's, we identify as an American. And when you realize, well, America, it's nothing, but it's a, it's a shell LLC for fucking big corporations. Then what am <laughs> I? I'm just a, I'm just a what are you, idiot. You know, and you almost feel ashamed of yourself, you know, or you can, you know, anyway, it just, I don't know. A lot of that stuff just, I just don't see how people think that that's good or how you're going to still be able to get people to buy in. He's on the edge of nihilism. <laughs> Theo, I think you said it better than I did. I'm that's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty well said yeah. at the end there, right? Um, yeah. I mean, that's why ahead, they keep Brandon. it off. That's why they keep it off of television. So people feel like when they have those feelings, that they're the only ones who have those feelings. Instead, what you see on television is people who earn, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars being on television or millions of dollars being on television or writing for the New York Times or some, you know, New York Times adjacent outlet saying that, like, we have to give money to billionaires because there won't be jobs otherwise. And then if you're sitting there without a job, you're like, what jobs? You know, like, right. like what jobs exist? I the, the first. <laughs> coming coming to the realization in in real time clip i remember you know it feels like forever ago when citizens united when you know getting big money out of elections was one of the biggest topics of our presidential election 2016 i guess it would have been you i wrote my I thesis heard, on that in college i haven't heard that <laughs> talk in four or five years like it's yeah. just been it's been abandoned you know you know not just medicare for all and all the other progressive policies hmm? She wrote a thesis in college. Does that mean she has a master's degree? Maybe. Uh, that's it for that one. So we again. Are you aware of a CIA psychological profile about you, sir? Would you be interested in hearing what the CIA had to say? This secret study portrays as a brilliant but dangerous megalomaniac who is likely to pursue his own aims in disregard of U.S. interests. He's an uncertain ally. Shall I go on or would you prefer that I stop, sir? <laughs> 